Hey, good morning. There's our mold from last week. If you watched the last three episodes, you know what got us to this point. Today, we're gonna pour some resin and uh, hopefully by the end of the day, have some nice castings out of, this, uh, out of this mold. But in order to do that, we need to make a case for this big chunky. I could probably maybe put, just put rubber bands all around it uh, and it would be okay, maybe. On the other hand, I want insurance because I don't want to be pouring big giant. This is heavy. This boy is heavy and that's a lot of resin. You know, it's a chunky monkey of resin. We don't want to waste it. So I want to see if number one, can we pour a pour and get a perfect casting on the first shot? Because I don't want to throw away this much resin. It's expensive. By the way, you might ask yourself, how do I know how much resin to mix? Well, I'm going to use this as my clue. I'm going to weigh this. This is probably heavier than the weight of resin. So I'm gonna weigh enough resin to fill this. And then I'm gonna have a couple of standby molds that I can pour the extra resin in if I have some extra resin. And that's how I do it. Then hopefully I'll waste as little resin as I possibly can. And of course, after we've done the first casting, we know what it, what it weighs and we'll be able to meter out the exact amount uh, perfectly every time. So the first thing I wanna do is worry about make, making clean parting lines. And to do that, I wanna put uh, a, a case around this. Uh, mostly I want to do that because I want there to be even nice pressure all around on this mold, all around. Uh, and, and this is going to really help. So first step is I'm going to measure out how big these pieces need to be. And I can tell you I'll be cutting them down maybe an inch on each side and about an inch and a half on the top. And I'll do that on the table saw. And try, you know I can work on the table saw, so you have to trust me. I'm going to do that off camera. But what's more important and something I wanted to show you and talk about is you can mess around with these molds quite a bit and customize them uh, as, almost as much as you want. There's no part of the pony that's, that's out close to these corners. This, these corners are pretty thick. And so it's going to be safe. I want to cut a bevel on each corner of about roughly a half an inch of rubber. And I'm not measuring, I'm not being hyper precise. I'm just pulling the rubber to put it under tension. And I'm just coming down the side of the mold like this. I just trimmed off that corner. And the reason for that is I drew an outline, as you can see, of my tank. You can tell that it's not gonna go into the tank horizontally. Like most of the time you see me put these things in horizontally. This time you're gonna watch me put it in vertically. Uh, so it's gotta go in like this. So to that end, you can see what I'm doing. I'm giving myself a little bit of extra room around these corners. It fits as is, but I want a little more room around these corners. So that is what I'm doing by trimming off just you know, about a half an inch strip. On, and, and it's going to serve another benefit too, by the way. It's going to allow a little bit more even distribution of pressure of the rubber bands. I won't have this corner for the rubber band. You know, when, the, when, the, when the rubber comes around these corners, it, it deforms the mold. It's not good. I like round molds. As you have seen me do many times, I generally build rounds into my molds. And that's in effect what I'm doing here. Trouble with a round mold is if it doesn't fit the shape of your model, you wind up wasting a ton of rubber. And you all know this stuff is gold. It's expensive. We don't want to waste it. So first things first, let's get these things cut down. Get them sawed. I'm using kind of a sawing action with a pulling action, and that just makes it easy to cut. And that was easy and quick. And now I want these sides, it tells me that this side wants to be about four and a half inches by about seven inches. So let me go off to the table saw. I will cut four and a half by seven inch pieces and we will get it done. All right, back from the table saw. Oh, and also I stopped off at, uh, and decided just for fun to round over the edges on these pieces to make them nice and easy on the rubber bands. And I did that on my handy dandy router table you see here. Uh, just a quick pass on the router table with the bearing on there, don't even need a fence, and it took two seconds and away we go. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna glue these 
we're gonna glue these pieces together. So let's break out the glue pot. I uh, bought a really fancy high-tech glue applicator. Jam that down in there. It may give me a nice booger of glue on there, and that's way too much glue for that little part. Way too much glue, so let's share it like that. Let's just go, don't be blocking up my light, put you out of the way. Let's share the glue, share the love. Okay, good job. Way to go. Okay, then I already marked these out, so I know exactly where they go. They go right like that. Take a quick clamp to hold it into position just for a second, just like that. And I can slam a good clamp on the other end. Get that on there. Boy, I love the way wood glue makes wood walk all over the place, huh? It's just a lot of fun. A lot of fun, but there is zero, and I do mean zero, precision required in this kid. There's nothing structural about these. The only reason I'm putting this strip of wood on here, by the way, is because I want to put pressure in the center of this plate with the rubber bands. I don't just want the rubber bands to put all their pressure on the corners, on the outsides of the mold. I want the rubber bands to put their pr some pressure in the middle too. That's the whole point to round molds. Okay, that's happy. Let's get this one in place. Everything has to be quick and easy in my life. I don't know if you've noticed that before. I'm a big, big fan of quick and easy. Okay. We've wasted enough time doing this job. Now, these will cure up in a short order, and we can uh, assemble the mold, put the rubber bands on, and pour some resin, and that's coming up next. What makes this mold unique is that it is a vertical loader, a top loader, and so I realized I'm gonna need a little floor, so I made a little floor, and I'm just gonna put it on a block of wood so I can get up underneath it. And it's going to load something like this onto here and like this. Now, the other thing is I need some kind of a handle because I'm going to be dropping it into the tank from above. Uh, and so uh, you would think in this giant building full of junk that I've been collecting for 100 years, I would have eyelets, screw eyes, but I don't. But I do. I did have these. These jobs right here, these little, I don't know what do they call hooks, these little uh, screw hooks. I just bent them into little screw eyes. Very nice. We'll get those installed easy and quick. They just screw in. No worries. So that'll go in. Do this one. Screw the wood in instead of screwing the screw in. So those are gonna go on there like that. Nice. And now, we can break out the rubber bands like that. Okay, that's in place. Now, how are we looking here, kids? How are we looking? I think we're looking okay. Let's put one up here like this. Ooh, that one is an old rubber band that blew up in my face, huh? Okay, get out some rubber bands. I need some rubber bands here, boys. Do this, do that, do this. Let's see if this one blows up in my face. Nope, didn't. I had a good one there. That's a good one. Okay. So now we're getting the thing sort of held together lightly and tightly. Okay. Now what we can do is we can start to wrap this thing in rubber bands. And what we're looking for here is beautifulness, absolutely beautiful parting lines. We don't want to see these parting lines. We want them tight, all on the sides. We put, we, when we look at them, we want, to, we want them to be absolutely tight and invisible. So let's just put some rubber bands on. What you want, as always, is you want even distributed pressure. And I'm gonna look at my parting lines every which way all around the thing, and I want absolutely sweet, tight, invisible parting lines. Feels really nice. 
Look how pretty that is. Look how pretty that mold is. Oh my God. We now need to make a hook out of this wire. We're gonna need some kind of a handle to hold, to be able to lift this thing. So let's see if I can engineer something up that works, something simple. Let's pick it up like that. Okay. Bend it over. Okay. About like that, do you think? Something like that? Something like about like that? Eh, not bad, Robert. Yeah, about like that. Okay, so let's bend it down. This wire is nice and stout, I'll tell you what. It's nice and stout, and it's fighting me every step of the way. But I'm very close to having a handle that I need. I can trim that off. Don't even need to. Dun da 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 da. Beautiful. We'll drop that thing right in there. Come on. Look how pretty that mold is. Look how pretty that mold is. Oh, so nice, so tight. All right. I am pleased with this, boys and girls. I think we've got a winner. We won't know until we pour some resin in it, so let's do that right now. First things first, we need to shake up the B side, and you can tell because it says right here. Where does it say? Right there. See where it says pre-mix well? Can you see that? Can you see that in there? See it says pre-mix well? This isn't like talking to your parents or your teachers. This, you, you gotta do what they say. You gotta listen to your manufacturer. They know what they're talking about. So they want us to shake up the B-side, so let's shake it. I'm far too lazy to actually lift this bucket. Okay, I'm gonna call that done. I don't pour out of these big buckets, it's just too hard. I got a B cup and I got an A cup. So let's dispense a little. The easy way to dispense this stuff ooh, is, it's too hard to do it out of the bucket, so I use cups. So the easy, way, the easy way to dispense resin out of a big bucket is to lay it down and just roll the bucket until you can pour it. See how quick and easy that was? So fantastic. And we're good on the B side. Okay, there's your B. Ooh. Uh, okay. Uh, these things are heavy. Oh. These buckets are heavy. Okay, this is the A side. You know it's the A side because it has a black lid. And you notice I didn't shake the A side. You don't shake the A side, you shake the B side. Now, that's this manufacturer's resin, and I'm following their instructions. You have to use the manufacturer's data sheet on the material you're using to read it, understand it, know it. It's there for a reason, and it really does matter. You don't want to wing this stuff. Come on, baby. Come on out of there. There we go. The A side's a little different color, too. It's more of a yellowish color. The uh, B side tends to be clear. Again, that's in this system. Wipe, 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 especially on the A side because the A side wants to make crusties on us. Okay, and down we go. Okay, we are ready. Now we've broken out the scale. The scale is teared. By tearing a scale, I mean balance it to zero, setting it to zero, so it is zeroed. Let's see what our little boy weighs here, this kid. I don't know, it's gonna weigh some grammage, let me tell you. Let me see. Let me see, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. Yep, it's not 500 grams, it's not 400 grams. It's more than 300 grams. 50, 60, 70, 80, 70. It is Exactamundo. 374 and a half grams. Let's call it 375 just to be safe. So we know we're gonna need 375 grams. That's what we're gonna start with. And uh, we'll see if we fill this mold up with 375 grams. We'll know soon enough. Before we get started, let's break out the die. You saw me do this before, so we're not gonna make a project out of this right now. Just gonna add a little bit of red dye to the B side. 
And that is so we don't stare at a white casting when it comes out of the mold. Stare at a pink casting. It'll be quite pink. And they'll be fine. It just helps you to see it on camera better. That's all I do it. And I don't make them blue and I don't make them green or anything because it contrasts, pink contrasts nicely with this blue rubber. So that's why I do it. In case you were wondering, which probably nobody was, that's enough of that nonsense now. We know we're going to go for 400 grams because we need a 375. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and uh, because I don't want to run out and I'm prepared to waste a little bit of resin. Let's make sure that the, that the cup is, and the scale is teared. We're going to do a 400 batch. So I'm going to start with 100 and I'm going to dump. Uh, let's, let's be a little bit, go wild and start with 150. We'll, we'll dump to 150. Okay, I'm at 170, 180, 190. Now there is no time to fool around because once I start to mix, we gotta go. So let's go to 200 and we're going to 390. So let's go, uh, let's just go to 270 and dump to 270. That was quick. Okay, we're at, we're at uh, 310. We're at 350, okay, we're at 380, and we are at, notice I am weighing accurately. I'm weighing to the gram. I am not interested in being inaccurate with my weights because I wanna make a good casting. And we're gonna stir like a madman because this stuff is, it's a pretty big vat of resin and we, it is going to go off and we are gonna pour in stages. So we are gonna stir, 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 stir really quick. Get that thing mixed up. No time to fool around. It is getting warm already. Let's pour this boy. Let's pour quick. Dump that thing in there. See, it's got a nice thick sprue in that front leg. Okay, okay. And now let's tip and shake and tip. I'm worried about those wings on the side. Remember those wings? I don't want to catch any bubbles in those wings. Okay, here we go. I am going to have some leftovers. That's all right with me. And there it is, risen up. Let's see if we have the time to pour these little shoes while we're at it. Okay, I poured the extras. Let's go, kids. Let's go to the tank. I see that the resin has risen up beautifully in all of the vents. All right. Back from the uh, tanks. What you did not see, because it was off camera, was we had our first debacle of this project, and that is that uh, uh, my tanks are 30 years old. And uh, they've always worked flawlessly, no problem. But my, my vertical tank failed me. And it was because the uh, adhesive dried up around the gasket. And of course, I haven't checked it. Uh, not one of these tanks has ever had a gasket adhesive replaced. They all seem to work, so it didn't occur to me to check it. But it wouldn't hold air. So upshot is this thing was cast with no, uh, no, no tank, no pressure. So it's just, an, just a plain old gravity pour, nothing helping it debubbleize. So we're going to see what we get. So I thought, well, lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> We'll just uh, see what we get. This would be what you would get if you didn't have uh, debubbleizing type gear like vacuum or pressure. You saw me earlier in this video dispensing out of a five gallon bucket. I'd buy the buckets because it's economical that way. But the downside is, is that a bucket can last me a year. And after a while, the resin just absorbs moisture from the air. Even if I carefully seal up the buckets, no matter what, it starts to absorb moisture. And that's what causes a lot of the foaming uh, or in the little pin bubbles that occur in resin castings. So if you're wondering why you're getting a lot of like little tiny bubbles at the top surfaces of your molds, it's probably moisture. That's what the tanks are for. The tanks will not remove big bubbles, but they will remove all those little fine bubbles that you get and they will prevent the resin from foaming. So that said, Let's open up. Okay, let's move this out of the way. We don't need you right at the moment. Oh, you know what? We'll do a practice de unveiling. These are the little shoes that I poured. Now, when I poured these, it felt to me like the resin was a little bit jelly. Not as fresh as I would like. So we'll see if we got castings. See how we did. I'm curious 
to see if these little shoes will cast without bubbles. Again, these got, whoops, these got no pressure either. And the answer is no. I caught two bubbles, and I've caught several bubbles, actually. Um, I'll get you some close-up pictures right, and insert them right here. If you can see bubbles in the side. So I definitely caught some bubbles here. And what that, that tells me is that it just it went down and it didn't push. There wasn't enough pressure to put the, push the bubbles out. So these are flawed castings. I'll send them to Dana anyway. She might want to play with them or you know, use them as a base for something. But uh, okay, we are going to pressure cast these and do these right. We'll get to that later. Okay. So fail number one, bubbles, bubbles, bubbles are the enemy. Bubbles are everything. Now you can see at the t on the top of this, you can see the fine pin bubbles. Uh, can I get that up there close enough so you can see that? You can see that there are these fine little pin bubbles that should not be there had this been pressure tanked. So we're gonna see what we're gonna see. It's exciting, it's always exciting to see what you get, no matter what, except when it fails, and then it's, a, it's crushing and heartbreaking and sad. It's like Christmas in August. Well, it's still warm, that thing is warm. Ooh, of course it's August, of course it's warm. Okay, here we go, here we go, I'm excited first cast out of this mold. Okay, big bubble in the foot. That's interesting, that should not be there. Good to know, but that's a super easy one to repair. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of the, you can see a lot of the foaming bubbles from the resin, but they're very, very tiny. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. It's exciting. Let's see if this thing demolds properly. Come on, baby. Come on, baby, there you go. Come on out. Come on out, my friend. There it comes. There it comes. Wow, pretty nice. Pretty nice. Not a bubble in the wings. Perfect, so that was where, that you saw me do the rocking motion. That was to make sure that I rocked out any bubbles that might have lived in there. None did, that cast perfectly. The, not loving this parting line here under the belly, but it's in, in a very discreet place um, and easy to repair. Otherwise, the, the, uh, the parting lines are not bad. I think we could get them better, but they're not. These are very, very easy to clean out. As you can see, there's, this is it. That's the, the sum total of the flashing that you get out of that. That's just nothing, nothing. That is a pretty clean casting. Now you're gonna have some work. You always have some cleanup. But boy, I tell you what, that ain't bad. That is not terrible. Okay. All right, very, very good. You know, for having failed, have not having pressure to help us, there are, you can see the foaming bubbles here under the chest. Those should not be there, and they would not be there if uh, you can even see those. I'll, 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 take some, I'll take some photos of this piece and, and, and up close, and hopefully it'll help you see better. But anyway, uh, I don't hate this. Uh, this is a perfectly usable casting. There's a little bit of work to clean it up, but it is a usable casting. Yay! Now let's do one more thing while we're doing it so we can get some accurate information here. Okay, scale is terrible. Let's find out what this thing actually weighs. It actually weighs 300 and 10. Oh man, just a whisker. Just a whisker over 300 grams. Okay, yeah, 300 grams will fill this. 300 gram pour, easy peasy. Stand by, we're gonna make more of these. Okay, so this is the second batch. We're making up our second attempt. First one's over here. This is gonna be a second one. Hopefully the pressure pot will cooperate with us this time. That will be most humorous if it does. Gotta go, go, go. This stuff does cook up mighty quick. Very good. Let's pour this boy about half. Yes, it's warm. I'm gonna dump it 
and I'm going to set you down so I can rock it. I'm rocking it just like I did the first time. Okay, let's pour, pour, pour. Let's rock some more. Okay, I think that we've rocked it pretty good. Check it pretty good. Okay, let's, let's finish it. Let's top it. Okay, so we're topping it off. And up it comes. Yep, very good. And it is warm and it is starting to gel. So let's get to it. Over we go to the tank. We're riding along on, bah! you're riding along on tank cam here. And we go down into the tank, down into the tank. Okay. Okay, that's off. Let's get this in, Let's see if we can do it. There you go, there you go. Mess that into place. Hold it up and away we go. Catch it. Oh, come on, catch it. I got you. Catch. Come on, catch. Catch. Why don't you catch it? There you go. For me, that was a war. I hope I got that in time. I got the second casting out of the tank, and uh, I, I, this time I was able to close it up, but I gotta tell you, the tank is being very cantankerous. So, it took a little longer to close the door than I would like, but I did get it closed. The question is, did I get it closed in time to keep the resin from gelling and uh, maybe catching the same kind of little pin bubbles we caught on the first one? We'll know soon enough, gotta open it up to see. It's always something in this business. Let me tell you, there's so many variables, so many things that you have to contend with all the time. That's just kind of the nature of it. But let's see what we can see here. Let's pull it. Okay, I caught it looks like a similar bubble in that foot, so that even rocking that thing isn't rocking that bubble out of the flat of that foot. Okay, that's just a trouble spot, but again, it's, it's uh, very, very easy to fix. So it doesn't disturb me greatly. Still, you want perfection if you can get it. Uh, superficially, it's looking pretty good. Let's take a look and see here. Put the mold aside. Okay, not untypical. We're picking up a little bit more flash. Still a very respectably small amount of flash. Yeah, we completely, absolutely cured the pin bubble issue, and we made better parting lines on this casting. No bubbles in the wings. That worked out. No bubbles this time in the eye. There was a tiny bubble here in the first one. That's pretty darn good. I am really, really pleased with that. Uh, it came out super well. There's very minimal cleanup. We got it. We have a winner. <laughs> really, really nice. This is a great. Are you done now? You're done. I couldn't be more pleased with the ponies. So now the only thing left to do is to mix up a little six gram batch of res and pour this kit, and let's do that while we're thinking about it. Okay, let's stir this up. Also, with a small volume like this, it's not gonna cure very fast. The bigger the volume, the, the more aggressively the resin sets, at least with the resins that I use, and I think it's generally true with a lot of resins. Big volumes cast quick, and they generate a ton of heat. A little tiny amount of resin like this barely gonna generate any heat at all. But I really wanna stir it up well, I want to really, sh I want to, I'm going to tap it. I'm going to shake it. I'm going to kind of push it down in there. That, those shoes are going to be tricky, but I also want to get it into the tank quickly. Okay, you see that? You got me, you got that. Let's write them out. Perfect. Okay, very liquidy, looking good. Let's get it into the tank and let's hope for a good result. 
All right, I pulled our little foot casting out of the tank. Let's take a look. Now this one, we have pressure on it, so we have a better chance, a better shot at getting it to be right. How do we look? How do we look? Come on, come on out. Push this on out. There you go. All right, how do they look? Oh yeah, perfect. No bubbles whatsoever. <laughs> Can you see that? How's that look? See that up there? Very, very, very nice. Yeah, all right, very, very good. Okay, it came out fine, just as expected. This is where uh, pressure pots really pay for themselves. It's doing little things like this, you just get flawless castings. No worries at all, it's fantastic. Hey, if you like this video, watch this video next and keep your comments and questions and projects coming because, you know, the content of this channel is really driven by you guys, the viewers, and I love hearing from you, and I'll see you next week.